Hi, welcome back to Grains and Small Places. And if you're new here, I'm Kara. Nice to meet you. And I'm glad you're here. And today I just wanted to talk about something that gets a lot of questions and that is the window pane. So I've talked before, I have a little short, I'll see if I can post here, um, about just a little video of the window pane. And I've shown that if you need longer with fresh milled flour, that you want to need until you get the window pane. And there's been some controversy of people saying you're needing too much or um, I can't get the window pane to develop or just all kinds of comments and questions. And I wanted to clear some of those things up and give you some tips on what you can do if your dough is not reaching the window pane. So this doesn't necessarily apply to making bread and kneading with regular commercial flour because regular commercial flour can get over kneaded fairly quickly. So you don't want that issue because it can give you the a wrong results. So if you over knead normal commercial white flour or bread flour, there could be an issue. However, um, there has only been one time that I have ever over kneaded fresh milled flour. <laughs> So, and that took me about 40 minutes and I don't know why my gluten wasn't developing for some reason or another. It just was not forming the gluten. So I just kept kneading it and I figured, you know what, why not see how long I can knead this until I have an issue. And there's been other times where I've kneaded my dough for 20 to 25 minutes and that's actually probably average in my mixer. That's probably average for people that have a KitchenAid mi mixer as well. Um, if you have the Bosch or the Ank mixer, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. So if you know, let me know in the comments. But if you have one of those mixers that are bigger like that, I've heard that you can knead much quicker and get your window pane to be successful in probably like seven to 10 minutes. So if you have one of those mixers, this may not apply or it may still apply for you if the mixer is new for you. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I generally use my Bosch compact mixer, which is different from the bigger Bosch mixer. Um, I also have a review video on that, but sadly they've discontinued that mixer. So really there's only a few left on Amazon and some on eBay. I believe you can still find, or if you're lucky and you find one at like a thrift store or something like that, or used on marketplace, then you found yourself a nice gold mine deal. <laughs> Okay, so the question I covered over kneading, things like that. If you do not knead until you reach the window pane, your bread will still be good and edible. I'm not saying that you have to reach the window pane to have edible bread by any means. Um, I'm just saying if you want that like soft, squishy, more like the commercial bread that your family may be used to, um, if that softer, squishy bread is much easier easier obtained by having a dough that has the full gluten when you reach the window pane and if you do take the time to do that I promise you'll notice a difference in your bread okay so what do you do if your bread is not reaching the window pane so this is a good question and this is answered by me purely from trial and error, just from making it so many times and talking with other people that make it also watching other videos and just things that I have learned over time of basically three things that you can do if it does not reach the window pane. So the first thing I would say is need it longer. So if you've only been needing it for 10 minutes, it probably needs to be needed longer if it's not reaching the window pane. Obviously you want to stop it, check it, give it a gentle pull. You obviously don't want to rip it apart quickly because that will rip it probably regardless. But if you're gentle and you can just kind of slowly ease it, I've seen other people rip a piece off and just kind of like slowly make um, a little window pane out of that piece. And you can do that method as well. Um, I'd rather not break the gluten strands when I'm doing it. So I just kind of pull gently on the dough ball itself and just pull it out and then just try to separate it. 
And the window pane, basically all it is, is you're pulling it gently so that the dough is so thick that the gluten has stretched so much without tearing that you can almost see light through it like a window pane. So that's where it gets the name from it. Okay, so the second thing, if you are kneading your dough and it's not becoming, or it's not coming to the window pane, then I would recommend possibly adding liquid. So I've noticed that if my dough is on the dry side, or if it's just kind of stuck to my kneading paddle and just going around like this, as opposed to, you know, how you want it to be mixing in the bowl. I like it to be a little bit spread out on the bottom of my bowl as it's mixing around. It almost looks too wet. It almost seems as everything fresh milled flour is different or opposite of when you use regular flour. So if you are a baker from years and years and years with tons of experience of regular flour and you switch over to fresh milled flour and you start having an issue with bread not turning out and not figuring out how to do things, that is normal. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that as people that I've been baking for 20 or 30 years. I've been baking for since I was a kid and my loaves always come out beautiful and now I switched to fresh milled flour and I don't know what to do. So almost you have to take all of that stuff that you've learned over those years and throw them out the window and be willing to take just a little bit of a risk or a little bit of a chance um, to do something different with the fresh milled flour because there is a learning curve to using it and I want to be here to help you <laughs> learn how to get through that learning curve a little bit faster than what I did when I was first starting to learn how to use it. So back to the dryer dough. If your dough is on the dry side, it probably will never come to a window pane. It'll keep breaking. It, it just, it will never stretch no matter how long you need it, no matter what you do with it, it probably needs liquid added. So even if you add just a little bit of warm water, not hot water, not cold water, just room temperature or slightly warmer than room temperature water, and you pour that in and you knead it on slow, like the number one, <laughs> until the water gets incorporated because it'll start to get kind of weird and look like it's separating and like, why did I add this water? But I promise it'll come together and it'll end up making a nicer dough. Okay, and then the third option that you can do if it's not coming to a window pane, um, it's my least favorite option, but it is an option out there for you, is you can add vital wheat gluten. So you can add actual, just they sell just gluten. You can add it to your dough and that will help the gluten to develop. This is something that is a common practice in some of like Sue Becker's bread recipes. Um, if you need bread quickly or if you're in a pinch or you want something super fluffy and, and light and you just don't have time to knead it like that, this is an option. I'm not saying it's a bad option. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that this would be my last go-to option if the other two were not working out for me. So as a side note, also depends on what wheat you're using. So you want to make sure that if you're trying to knead bread and get the stretchy dough that we all want, um, you're going to want to use a hard wheat. I almost always mix my hard wheats with something else, whether that be kamut or spelt or something like that. But you want to have a higher gluten content if you want a yeasted raised bread. And the higher gluten content comes from those hard red or hard white, generally, um, wheats. Now, that's not to say you can't make bread from all kamut or all einkorn. I do have a video on 100% kamut bread that I can link for you if you're interested in that. Being that that's an ancient grain, that is a bread that is sometimes tolerated by people that can't have gluten. Not necessarily a gluten allergy like celiac. We, I probably still wouldn't recommend that, but somebody that has a gluten sensitivity may be able to eat kamut, spelt, or einkorn, or emmer, which are our ancient grains, and they generally have a lower gluten content in them. So I hope this helps clear up some questions that you might have. Um, if you have any more questions for me, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I try to answer the questions when I can. In the meantime, let's also go and check on that cabinet edition that we're putting in for my parents. And I'll show you week three of what's going on there and, and what Matt and I have worked on at that time. <laughs> so 
here's the the deck that we put on here this is a temporary railing and he's gonna eventually have the roof finished of course but it's coming along really well and pretty quick this is the wall that will be enclosed for the bathroom so you won't be able to get in from here but we're just using it as our entrances and exits so here's where the ridge lines had to meet up one peak and we're putting these overhangs in here and the valley had to be able to drain between the gable peak on this roof I'm just kind of enjoying watching this storm roll in. I don't know if you can see the trees behind me. They're getting kind of windy. It was kind of blue back there before, and now it's getting gray over here. So um, I really appreciate the time that you spend with me and all your kind comments. It helps keep me going and continue to keep this channel alive. Also, don't forget to go ahead and head over to my Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below. There you can find every time I post a blog post, which has usually new recipes or tips and tricks, reels, things like that. Also, I post all my videos there, so that way you won't miss anything. And then if you go to my blog at grainsandsmallplaces.net, that's where all my recipes are located, and I'm continuing to add to that every week. And you can also sign up there on my mailing list, and I try to send out an email maybe once or twice a month. I don't bombard your email with something every day or <laughs> anything like that. I don't like spam either. So I, I get that not wanting an email every day. So I just try to keep that at a minimum, just letting you know the newest blog posts and the new newest video, or if I have any exciting news or anything like that come up, um, I will post that in there. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn that little notification bell on. That way you'll know when I'm putting out any more content. And don't forget to share with your friends. And thank you for stopping by Greens and Small Places. Goodbye. That storm came through and you can see this beautiful rainbow. Just had to share it. Bye. 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 Bye.